Hello, Mr. Kimmon here. Great job on your plays today. Uh, what I want to do now is take you through the first part of your study guide and show you how to work through this study guide. So this part here, this is just some general guidelines for you. All right, don't worry about this. I'm going to walk you through what I want you to do. So let's take the intro unit, the Middle Ages, for example. The first thing you're going to want to do is pull up these links. So this is going to take you to all the documents for this unit. It's going to take you to a shared folder. And in this shared folder, which you want to open in Drive, and then it becomes your own. So that folder is your own then, and you have access to all these documents. So do that first. And then I've highlighted a few documents that are most important. So the Middle Ages class review, I'm going to open up that document and use that as an example of how I'd use it to study. So here's our Middle Ages class review. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So I'm going to start looking through this. And I'm going to see things that I think, oh yeah, we studied that. And that's not a part of what I'm going to have you do here. Um, and let me show you that. So in your study guide, you got these three big ideas, major ideas, the Great Schism, the Bubonic Plague, the Hundred Years of War. So what I want you to do is copy those and then make them into a chart like this. So I took my three major ideas and I made them three headings. And that's our idea. And then within those three headings, I'm going to look for facts as I'm studying about them. And then I'm also going to analyze. Okay? So I'll walk you through that. And then as I go, I want to add other ideas that are big deals but weren't included here. So for instance, feudalism, that would be a big idea. And then my most important documents, as they come up, I want to be recording them. And then the basics about why they're important, what they're about. So that's what you're going to have. You're going to have your major ideas. You're going to have facts for all of them. Then you're going to have analysis. Other major ideas that pop up as you're studying and then most important documents. You can create this any way you want. You can do it like I'm doing it on a Google Doc or you can create it on a piece of paper. Go old school. Well, let me take you through how I do this. So I read through feudalism and I try to just get the very, very basics of feudalism because we're going to keep our words and our study guys short. Feudalism is a social system where peasants work the land of higher-ups, nobles, lords, etc. All right, we're going to keep it all short. Good, okay. Now I continue to work through it. All right, so that's feudalism. That lasted for a long, long time. Uh, Ottoman Empire. Ooh, there's another idea. That's an important one. So I had another one. Ottoman Empire. And I read through it, and I realize, okay, this is the... Islamic Empire to the east of Europe, control trade routes, for example, Constantinople is very important. Constantinople, okay, covered that one. Mm, yep, Constantinople, spices and gold. I read through it and I think, yeah, pretty much got it. Maybe I want to add a couple of things. For instance, spice trade, especially in control, spice and gold trade. That helps. Gold trade routes and Constantinople. All right, then I keep working my way through. Ooh, interesting pictures. That's helpful. Look, there's Constantinople right there. What a strategic location because all of China and Asia is over here and the Silk Road comes this way and then spices go down through the sea and you have to pass through Constantinople and then the sultans and the empire taxes every ship that comes through before they get to everywhere in Europe and then they make a ton of money. So the Ottoman Empire gets rich during the 14th century. Hmm, interesting. Next one, Black Death. Ah, that's one of my major ideas. Okay. So, Black Death comes from the Mongols, spread through Europe, infected bodies, and because of trade, uh, through trade ships from the Black Sea. Okay, so it came from the Black Sea. Bubonic Plague. 
devastating disease. That's what it is. Spread through trade. Time period, 14th. We know it lasts on through even through the 17th century. But devastating in the 14th century. Okay, what else? Present. Killed so many people that Europe wasn't overpopulated and the economy was weakened because of so much death, but the peasants' position within the economy was strengthened because there were less workers. Ooh, that's interesting. It also affected religion because many people thought they were being punished for their sins and asked God for forgiveness, so these people blamed minority groups like the Jews for the Black Death. Ooh, that's important stuff. So I'm going to add a couple of things. Minority groups persecuted... Jews blamed. Okay. What else did we say? Oh, peasants uh, have opportunities because of so many deaths. Doesn't mean they are treated better, necessarily, but their voice will be heard a little tiny bit more. Okay. Cool. Good. And then what is this? This is okay. So in 1347, it comes from the east, first through Italy. Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple of things. Starts in the south. Southern Europe and travels north. Dates are nice. Dates are nice. Not like romantic. I'm talking about tar starts. In southern Europe, our date was 1347, and travels north by 1349. Okay. Analysis. You could actually take this, because that's part of the analysis. I mean, these are facts, but this is also good, good analysis. Minor, minority groups were persecuted. That's because of the plague, right? So that happens after... Jews are targeted. Uh, peasants have opportunities because of so many deaths. The response by the nobles. Nobles' response. Generally, no. We're not going to pay you better, right? And we might think a little bit more. Future, it impacted the future because there were no more people. The peasants had to work, which led them to demand higher wages. This eventually turned into rebellions because nobles said no more money. Eventually the kings killed and threatened the peasants to stop. Be more specific, I said to them way back in the day. Isn't this fun? Oh, man. In England, peasants revolted in 1381, and in France it was called the Jacquerie. And here's one of the beauties of this. If you just open this up and make it your own document, you could just copy and paste so much of this information. But I can't right now, so I'm just going to transfer it. But that's very important, right? Analysis, revolts, uh, peasants revolt in England, 1381, and Jacquerie in France, 1357. Revolts resulted because Nobles do not want to pay more. Okay. All right. So bubonic plague, pretty much done. That's pretty good. Um, I'd continue through. Unum sanctum. Oh, I remember that. That's a, a document written by the Pope. And that was very important because he declared that the church should have more power than the state. And when he did that, France got mad, sent somebody, some people to beat him up almost kills the Pope, and then the new papacy is moved to France, and we have two Popes. Boom. That's important. So, Unum Sanctum, 1302. Document. Um, it's actually, let's use terminology. Papal Bull, which means just a church document. Church doc. Declaring church authority greater than uh, nation, nations. Note, response, France. <laughs> uh, 
France and King Philip II, I believe. Let's see if it's in there. Not, but that would be helpful to know the king. But anyways, it's fine. France responds violently, and ultimately this leads to Avignon Papacy. What? Two popes? You can't do that. No, you can't. And that frustrates a lot of people. And all of this, essentially, if you want to copy and paste it, this is part of the Great Schism. So these are facts about the Great Schism. So we just send that here. Two popes. Analysis of the Great Schism. Eventually, there's three popes uh, in France, in Italy, and then when the church tries to fix it, there's another split, and we get a third pope. But analysis, one of the things is loss of credibility for the church with three popes. Other things you'd think of, well, if the church loses credibility, rise in state, or as we call them, nation, rise in state power. Okay. And then you just continue through. Find information on the Hundred Years' War. Oh, that's a nice one. Papal Schism. Avignon Papacy, more information there. Great Schism, thank you Michelle and Remy, more information there. English Peasants Revolt and the Jockery, a little more detail there, that's nice. And then the Hundred Years of War, uh, I made some notes here which will be helpful. But, look through that and look through your notes on the Hundred Years of War. So this is just one example that could help you. Joan of Arc, that's another character I would add. So... I'd finish the Hundred Years' War, add Joan of Arc, and then I'd go through my test. So, I would definitely go through every single test. Looking through lectures helps, um, but the most important thing is going to be your test. So this is the test, Middle Ages Unit Exam. And this is where you're going to find most of the primary source documents. So, what was important about this? The Confession of Agamet of Geneva. So you read through that. The Dance of Death. There's another primary source. The Great Schism. There's another primary source. You don't have to add all of them, but I would definitely include the Dance of Death and know what was the point of these documents. What was being said here? What was being said here? And then I would definitely make a note. Dance of Death, what was that? Alright, so that uh, is basically what I want you to do for each chapter. Middle Ages is almost done here. And I'll share this document with you so you guys can use this as a starting place. And then just finish up for the Hundred Years War and in reviewing the chapter, anything else you find for other major ideas most important documents and then let me show you what that means for chapter 13 and 14 so where's your study guide here we go so that was the intro unit and that's the shortest unit so you got some work to do chapter 12 the renaissance you're going to pull up the documents here's your major ideas and you notice you got quite a few more categories that you're going to need to work with and I would recommend working with these things. Not every category is going to have a ton of information. For instance, the Medici. You might make a category for that, and all you have under it is patrons of the artists in Florence, Italy. Consider the family behind the Renaissance. Well, there you go. That's enough. And then you might have for Northern Humanism quite a few more things. So these are the best starting places. And that's what you need to do for your study guide. Each of the documents, it tells you whether it's in the binder, your binder, and online, or just in your binder, or online only. Some of the documents are online only. All right. So I'm going to do...